Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Widow podcast. It's really good to have you here with me again. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the expectations that we often find we take on in our grief as as widows and, and widowers and surviving partners and the impacts that can have on our grieving journey alongside the, the reality of it you know our our expectations versus our reality are often very different and it's it's learning how to acknowledge that and how to maybe lower your expectations manage your expectations and allow yourself to, to be a little bit more realistic in in how you are navigating your grief because you are thrown into this world that you do not know, that you do not understand, that you feel very alone and and isolated in. So I'm just gonna talk through a few things that I found I was expecting of myself, but there are also things that I have noticed other widows, are expecting of themselves in my groups, in my one-to-one coaching, and and the things that seem to to come up the most, often subconsciously, because we kind of, we take on a lot from society. We take on, on a lot from the things we read, the things people say to us, from from beliefs we might have absorbed along the way somewhere we're not necessarily sure where they've come from we haven't challenged them we've just taken them on as beliefs and facts and and that's the truth and what I love to do with my clients in in my groups and in my one-to-one coaching is help them become more aware of where these stories these beliefs these expectations, where do they come from? Are they true? Are they realistic? Are they kind? And what can you do to help yourself? Because we layer our grief with so much extra suffering. Again, often subconsciously, we don't, we're not always aware that we're doing it. We're we're doing it in in our minds with with our thoughts. And it's just creating that awareness. It's noticing what's going on, seeing what serves you and what doesn't and, and, and shifting it, changing it, changing the narrative. It's not easy, you know, but if we can start to highlight these things, it, it normalizes things for us and, and it, can, it can help us find a, a more positive way through our grief. So one of the, the expectations that I certainly placed on myself, and I know many others do the same, is expecting life to carry on just as it was. And it doesn't work. You face double the work with half the workforce. In fact, I think it's more than double the work because you're, you're obviously trying to continue to do all the things that you used to do in your previous life. You're then taking on your loved one's role you know, roles, whatever they were, you know, we all have different parts to play in our relationships. And then you've got your grief on top of that. And that's tough. That's really tough. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of heaviness. That's a lot of energy. But we don't acknowledge that. We kind of think, do you know what? I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to carry on. Life can continue as it was and it will all be okay. And it will all be okay, but it's unlikely. I'm not saying it's impossible because remember, we all do this in our own unique ways. There's no right or wrong way. And some people will carry on with their lives and it does work. I I get that. You know, everything I say is is not set in stone and, and not a one size fits all. You know that, right? But it's looking at what's working for you. If you're trying to continue with everything that you did before your person died, are those things still working for you? Are you being realistic in what you're expecting of yourself to do, to to learn to do, to continue doing? And is, is there something that maybe you can let go of? 
because it's all about change right and and life has changed and it's it's learning to accommodate these changes and make them work for you <clears throat> excuse me make them work for you not against you so you know just again look at what you're expecting of yourself is everything that you're trying to do serving you is it realistic is it achievable is it sustainable how is it making you feel and are there things that maybe you can let go of that will help aid you through through this this time of your life and just opening your heart and your mind to doing things differently I know it's hard. I know you want to hold on to everything as it was. I completely get that. And sometimes it's nice to keep super busy because then we don't have to face our grief and sit with the pain. I get that too. And that's okay. If you choose to do those things, that's absolutely okay. Usually in time, these things do come back and, and bite you on the bum because that, you know, there's only so long we can run and hide from our grief for, but I, you know, as, as always that some people need to do that for a certain amount of time and keeping busy allows them to do that. And that's okay. Um, you, you know, we will all do this differently, but if you get to a point where you kind of go, that served a purpose, it's got me to this point and, and I needed to do that. Now I'm not sure it's working quite so well for me. Do I need to change it? It's just always being aware of what you're doing and how you're feeling and connecting the two because then you can make the changes you need to make if it's not working out for you. Another expectation we have is expecting ourselves to have all the answers to everything immediately. I mean, it's just not realistic, is it? To kind of, to suddenly lose your person um, even if that's been through an, an illness or it was a sudden loss, you, you know, you do, you know, even when you're expecting it, you do suddenly find yourself living a very different life. And, and sometimes even if you knew it was coming, you didn't really know the reality of it and, and what it would look like and what it would feel like, because it's really hard to put that in, into words and explain to somebody. So you find yourself in, in this, this world that you're trying to navigate, you're, you're trying to, you know, grieve your person, grieve the life that you had before, figure out your new life, the new you, the, the, the new way of being. And you're in this middle ground. And that middle ground is very unsettling. It's very isolating. It can feel very lonely. And we put this pressure on ourselves to have all of the answers straight away to, to know what we're going to do with the house, what we're going to do about work, or what kind of person am I going to be? What do I like doing with my time? How am I going to parent these children in the best way? What should I do about a holiday this year? Should I buy the new car? Um, or, there's just so many questions and, and they can be tiny, tiny little decisions that we, we need to make. Um, or they can be big decisions that we need to make. You know, some people have, have moved towns, countries to be closer to family. And that, that they're huge. They're huge choices. And what we have to do is sit with these questions for a while and, and not get frustrated. We're very quick to go. I can't do this. I don't have the answers. I'm, I'm unable to make decisions. And we give ourselves a really hard time instead of going, do you know what? I don't have the answers right here, right now, but I will figure it out. And if there's one thing I learn in my grieving journey is that the answer comes. It might not come when you demand it or expect it or want it to come, but it will come. And I had to learn patience. And that's not something that comes naturally to me. I want the answers like yesterday. I want things done like yesterday. And I'm incredibly impatient. I had to learn to stop, to breathe, and to wait for the answers to come. Because if I rushed them, if I gave myself a hard time and beat myself into answers, I often didn't make the right choices because I wasn't in the right place. I didn't have all the relevant information. I didn't know. But because I was being impatient and rushing an answer, it, it often then didn't really work out in the, in the best way. So it's, you know, we have to. We have to learn 
to be able to sit with big questions and just trust in the process, trust that the answer will come because it will, it absolutely will. It might take days, weeks, months, years, and it might, you know, especially the who am I, where do I fit in this world and what do I want from life? I mean, that that took me years to figure that out. Um, not want to take everyone years, but, you know, it's it's just saying it's OK to not have all the answers. It's absolutely OK. In fact, you shouldn't have all the answers. I mean, really, when you look at life, when do we ever have all the answers? We don't. We just kind of get sort of car we carry on don't we on the on the hamster wheel of life but we don't really stop to ask ourselves the questions but when something life-changing and traumatic happens to us we, we suddenly stop and take notice of the questions a bit more um and, and it obviously in invites different bigger questions in as well but just allow yourself that space to figure it out don't give yourself a hard time you're absolutely 100% capable of making decisions you will figure out the right way for you definitely you will do that the answers will come and just in in the moment you know it's, it's changing that that narrative not to I can't do this I don't know what the answer is and I can't make decisions just to I'm not sure yet what this will look like for me and that's okay but I'm in the process of trying to figure it out. And just in that time of me trying to figure it out, I'm going to be kind to myself. Because if you're kind to yourself and you come from a place of, of love and compassion and kindness, the, the, the right answers will come sooner. You, you can't beat yourself <laughs> into answering these things, you know? expecting yourself to be both parents now this is huge isn't it if you're a parent and you have lost your person the the other parent to your your children that's tough you suddenly find yourself solo parenting in a very scary world with a lot of big questions again and you expect yourself to be both mum and dad you feel like you have to fit into both shoes you know I remember when Simon did he, Simon died he was the disciplinarian I was very much the, the kind of nurturing loving I'm not saying he wasn't but you know what I mean we play our roles don't we in, in our parenting and he was always the one that would would lay down the law I wasn't quite so good at that but I had to learn how to do that after he died. But it was it was understanding that I didn't have to do it in exactly the same way he did because our circumstances had changed and, and I had to adapt to that. Um, but I, I couldn't I couldn't be him. I just had to think about what I wanted to, to do for my children and how I wanted to to guide them. But I had to learn new ways. I had to parent differently. And I very much expected myself to, to fill his shoes, to, to pass on all the knowledge he would have passed on, to give my children everything he would have given them. And I just, I exhausted myself with it when I realized I can't, I can't be Simon. I can't be dad to my children. But what I can be is the best mum that I can be in this life. I can love them with all of my heart. I can be there for them. And I can walk alongside them whilst they grieve their dad and, and be honest with them and, and say, you know, it is hard sometimes. And yes, I do have to, to step up a bit at times and, and be a bit different because I'm on my own now. It can't look the same. It can't feel the same, not for any of us. But, you know, it's that reassurance that I, I love you and I'm here for you. And, and for us, I think we need to learn to understand that being who we are, mum or dad, you as that one person is enough. And not expecting yourself to be both. It's just remembering you are enough. If you can wrap them in love and give them that safe space for their grief, for their growth, for, for their love and, and, and nurturing, that's enough. You can't take away all their pain. You can't be both parents to them. You're, again, you're just expecting far too much of yourself. It's about being realistic and being the best parent you can be. And for me to do that, I had to, I had to invest in me. I had to figure out how to be the best version of me I could be so that I was 
guiding them in the right way. I was being the best role model that I could be. You know, I always come back to it, but children do as you do. They don't do as you say. So I had to, to live out what I was expecting of them. And, and in order to do that, I had to learn how to do that because I didn't know how to do that by myself. But, you know, you know just again, you, you can't do it both. You can't do them both. You, you, you know, you can share the stories. You can pass on the wisdom that, that you learned from your person. But you can't be them. You are you. You are unique. You are extraordinary. You are amazing. And you are enough remind yourself of that every single day they love you as you are as the one parent that you are expecting yourself to get everything right and grieve in the right way this is huge isn't it you know like we we believe that there's a one size fits all almost like, how do I do this? How do I grieve? You know, I remember sort of relentlessly looking through the internet and social media, trying to find answers to the questions I had, like, how do I grieve? How do I do this in the best way that I can? Is there's got to be like a, a step-by-step process, something that I can follow. So I get to the end of it and I know I'm okay. You know, it's got to be a right way of doing this. People are very quick to give you their their ideas, their, their, their knowledge from maybe somebody else or something that they've read and to share that and, and, and say, do this and do that. And this is a good way. And that. And do you know what? Ultimately, there is no right way. There is only your way. And we will all do this differently. And that is absolutely 100% okay. (laughs) You don't have to do it the same way I've done it. You don't have to do it the same way your best friend did it. You don't have to do it the same way your parent did it. You don't have to do it the same way the online celebrity did it. We will will all have commonalities and that's that's a good thing. You, You know, we can reach out, we can share and we can say, yes, I felt that I did that and that worked for me. But there will also be things that I say that other people say that you'll go, no, that doesn't that doesn't work. You know, we were talking in, in my group last night about, um, you, you know, somebody uses the term positively grieving. Somebody else prefers the term actively grieving, you know, and that's OK. Some people don't like moving on. They like moving forward. Some people don't see a difference in, in either of them. Some people want to find love after loss. Some people don't want to find love after loss. And it's just kind of understanding and respecting that we will all do this differently. There, there is no right or wrong. It's, it's just finding what works for you, leaning into that and going with it. And almost being brave enough to say to others, well, this is my truth. This is my reality. And we don't have to shout each other down. We don't have to say, oh, that's that's really wrong. You know, it's kind of, <clears throat> again, just respect that people will will do what they need to do to get through it. And yeah, do you know what? You will do things that don't work out so well. I made some really very... <laughs> questionable choices in my grieving journey I you know I did some really silly things things that didn't work out quite so well for me things that could have gone horribly wrong but luckily they didn't and I I kind of I can't beat myself up for that I was doing what I needed to do at the time and it got me to where I needed to get to that you you aren't going to make sensible thought out choices all the time that's life right you you know like that's just how it works and and we have to remember as well when emotions are high intellect is low so our ability to make reasonable sensible choices when we're feeling very emotional we're less able to do that but don't give yourself a hard time for it just kind of go do you know what I did that thing didn't work out so well maybe shouldn't have done it not going to do it again that's fine. We're learning. We're learning all the time. And it's not about getting it wrong or failing. It's just kind of going, okay, that thing doesn't work. That thing does work. 
So, so let's let's just create an awareness again around what we're doing, the choices that we're making. Are they serving you? Are they not? Stop giving yourself a hard time. You're figuring this out. And whatever way you need to do that, that's what you're going to do. And that's OK. Just, again, give yourself some some grace. Judgment of others is huge, isn't it? And we very much expect people to have very little judgment or have no judgment on how you grieve. And it's just not going to happen. First and foremost, people judge. You, you know, it's it, we all do it. We're all guilty of it. If anyone says to you they don't, they're probably lying um, or they're just a really, really super lovely person. Um, but at, at some point in our lives, we judge. Now, I judge, I make judgments. But what I do do is if I catch myself making a judgment, it's kind of going, do you know what? That's not fair. You're making a judgment on something that you know very little about and you're assuming things and you don't know their truth. You don't know their reality. You don't know enough about their life. You're not walking in their shoes. So I'm not saying I don't ever do it. I do do it. But what I can do is catch myself doing it and rein myself in and, and recognize that it's not fair. It's not fair to, to do that. And you will find that people will have a, a say on whatever you choose to do. You know, some will believe that maybe you're moving on too quickly, that you're, you, you know, you, you've met someone new far too soon. Others will say you're just completely hung up on your deceased love and you should be getting on with it by now. Whatever you do, you're, you're going to meet someone that has a point of view on it because people like to have a point of view on their on other people's lives. A lot of the time it's because it makes them feel better about their own lives because their own self-esteem is low. Their, their own confidence is low. They're not happy in their life. So then what we do is we judge others and we put others down to make ourselves feel better. Not all the time, I'm not saying all the time, but a lot of the time. So people will do that, but we can't base our life on what other people may or may not be saying. We just, we just can't. And expecting people never to judge you is unrealistic people do so what we have to learn to do is kind of say what other people think of me is none of my business I'm going to live my life in an authentic way for me that feels good for me and what other people have to say about it simply doesn't matter because whether you live to please them or you live to please yourself they're going to judge you so do what you want to do <laughs> <laughs> let them judge you you know it's, it always comes back to that saying and I always say it to myself that those that matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter and it's just so true because those close enough to you that really do matter they will understand and they, they will have followed you on, on your journey so you know just kind of learn to let that go a little bit and worry a little bit less about it I know it's not something you can switch off but it's something we can learn to, to live with and to worry much less about because it happens. It happens. Expecting yourself to be all better in a certain amount of time. You, you know, we all do it, don't we? We look at other widows and, and widowers and where they are in their journey and, and the, the timeline they've got to their in and think, oh, God, am I doing this wrong? I should be better by now. Um, they're much further ahead than me. You, you know, and or, or kind of looking at someone that feels like they're in a good place to you and, and thinking, right, well, when I get to that timeline, I'm going to be in that place too, and it's going to be much better for me. Again, it's, it's different. It's different for everyone. Some people meet someone new and, and feel really good after six months a year. Other people might still be really struggling after eight years. It's, it's just helping yourself to get through it in the best way that you can without putting a timeline on it because there isn't one, because effectively we will be grieving forever. What we've got to learn to do is carry that grief more lightly and nurture ourselves through it. And if we can do that, that you know, the rest will come. But, but don't put pressure on yourself to be somewhere by a certain amount of time. There isn't one. And even if you look at someone else, you, you know, you've, you, you, the, the experiences, the loss is different. The support you've had since the loss is different. The way you deal with loss is different. You know, your, your financial, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, your finances, they're going to be different, aren't they? Where you live. 
um, the community that you've got around you. All of this impacts how we deal with our grief. And it's not the same for everyone. You know, especially those that have lost people through COVID. It's like, that's huge. They've lost a lot of their, their support networks around them. So that's going to have an impact on, on their grief and, and how they're feeling. So, you know, just remember, there's a lot of different factors to take into account in terms of how people are supported through their grief, that the different experiences people find themselves in, the different situations and all of that affects us and how we deal with it. So don't compare, don't expect too much of yourself. You'll get to where you need to be when you're ready. And, and you just have to trust in that process and go, do you know, I'm going to figure this out in the best way that I can. And you clearly are because you're listening to me here now. If you know you've, you've gone out, you've had a look, you've seen what support is out there, you found some and you're listening to it. That's that's brilliant. That's you trying to find the most positive way through your grief that you can. And you should be really proud of yourself for that because it's not easy. Um. Another point really is that we expect those around us to know what to do or what to say. And this is a big one, I think, because we we don't realize the impact it has on, on others, our, our grief. You know, like we are thrown into a world that we don't understand. But also, so are those around us that love us. They are thrown into a world they don't understand. They are seeing you broken you know and I know a lot of people don't like that word because they say we're not broken we don't need fixing um but devastated okay you you and that's really hard that's really hard for those around us to um know how to help us we naturally want to fix people we want to make people better we want to resolve all their problems and find solutions and take away the pain because we love them and we care for them we will all have different ways of doing that but we don't always know what to say and what helps and what doesn't and and us as grievers we can often expect those around us to to know more about grief than they do and we can expect them to know what's going to feel good for us and what isn't and and they're, they're, they're as blind as we are in this. In fact, they're probably even more blind because they can't feel what we're feeling. They don't know what, what's going to work and, and what isn't. And, you know, we don't either a lot of the time, but when somebody says it, we do. Um, so I, I always think it's, it's really important to help guide those that love you to support you in the best way that they can, because they need you to do that. They don't know. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to support you in the best way possible. Yes, there's the practical things, but they're not always obvious to everyone. Um, people do want to help you, but they don't know how to help you, especially if they haven't had a significant loss in their lives. You know, and I mean, I've had a significant loss in my life and I still sometimes don't know what the best thing to say is to those really close to me that have suffered a significant loss themselves, not not a, a life partner, but a parent, maybe. And, you, you know, I, I just sometimes have to say, look, I can't imagine what you're going through. I, I haven't I haven't lost a parent myself um, and I'm really sorry for, for what you're going through right now, but I'm here. And I will listen and I will ask, you know, I'll always ask questions about their person. Um, but it, it's hard. It's really hard. And I think we need to recognize that a little bit and, and, you know, to help them to help us and not expect them to have all the answers to, to kind of make everything feel better because it's not within their gift, really. They can support us. They can be there. And my God, does it help? You know, we cannot do this on our own. 100% we can't. Um, but they do need a, a little bit of guidance in terms of what, what feels right and, and what we need. And I know that can feel heavy when you're going through your own grief. But, you know, just letting them know when they do something that feels good, but also letting them know when they do something that maybe doesn't feel so good. And you can do that in a kind way. It doesn't have to be in a horrible way, but just, you know, that kind of, do you know, this felt really good from you, but this one maybe didn't. And I don't really know why, but um, maybe we, you know, maybe we should avoid doing that. Um, but, you know, whatever kind of feels right for you. So, 
they're just a, a few things, a few expectations that I've had that I know others have had that, you know, I'm sure a, a couple of them will have resonated with you as well. And the reality is it's hard. It hurts and, and few people really get it, even if they've been through it sometimes, you know, they may have grieved so very differently that they don't get it either. So, you know, it is hard to find that support network. Um, it's it's really hard to explain to people the reality of it. And, and even if we try, sometimes it just feels impossible to put it into words. But it is, it's tough and it will change you and it will change your life. But that change doesn't mean that it's going to be bad forever, you know? I think we get stuck in this place of, you know, our person has died, we're thrown into this unknown world. The pain is unbearable. It hurts, it hurts physically, mentally, emotionally, and we don't know how to do it. We, we don't understand. But what we do do is we figure it out along the way. It's a slow process. It's a long process. It's a painful process, but it's also filled with a lot of joy and love and peace and contentment and growth and opportunity and possibility. It honestly, you, it won't, it won't be permanently bad when the, when the, pain eases the fog lifts the grief lessens and and you are open to some joy some fun some peace some easiness take it take it don't fight it it's all part of your grieving journey you're not going to be in pain permanently you are going to have moments where you feel lighter and that's okay lean into those moments they are part of the grieving process. They're not a part of the grieving process that people like to talk about <laughs> because we all talk about the pain and the anguish and the despair and the devastation. Of course we do, because that's that's the really hard part, right? That's the bit that hurts. But there's so much more to it than that. There are amazing magical moments that are created within your grief. And that's okay. It's all part of it. The, the pain, the heartache, that will come back, you know, it's, you, you don't kind of stop hurting, feel a little bit lighter, enjoy life for a couple of days and go, oh my God, is that it? Am I done? <laughs> no, it's, it's a roller coaster ride. You're up and down like a yo-yo. But it's understanding it's all necessary and it's all a part of, of what you're going through. So, so allow both parts of, of your grief to be, lean into whatever is showing up for you, learn how to nurture yourself through that in the best way that you can. And know that, you know, over time, the pain becomes less frequent, that the, 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 you know, your new life, the peace, the, the love, the fun, the joy, that becomes more and the pain becomes less. Be but what, you know, whatever that looks like for you, you still will always love and miss your person. They have shaped who you are. They live on, you know, within you and, and you carry them forward. You carry that love forward with you in your life. But allow it all to be. So thank you for listening. I hope some of that has helped. And I will very much look forward to seeing you in the next, ugh, sorry, I say seeing you, I won't be seeing you and I, but <laughs> you know what I mean. I shall see you in the next episode of the Widow podcast. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye.